what is going on everybody i would like to welcome you guys to my channel uh if you've been here before then welcome back to my channel the inspiration to make this video comes from another youtuber who uh, i subscribe to absolutely love his videos uh lav luca uh i'm gonna leave his uh channel link down in the description uh but i've been wanting to do some different things here i usually do music um or beatboxing uh as my as my reactions what i react to uh, but I, I want to branch out. I want to start doing different things. I want to bring in a new audience because I like, not only do I like finding out new things, learning things, uh, being exposed to new types of music, uh, different kinds of entertainment. Um, I like for, for like my subscribers to discover other things. You know what I mean? And I've seen a lot of that. And I, that's one of my favorite parts about doing this. Not only do I get exposed to new things and do I get to learn stuff, but uh, my subscribers do as well. All right, so let's say someone subscribes to me for a certain band. Let's say, let's say Nightwish, which is a phenomenal band, by the way. Let's say someone subscribes to me for Nightwish, and then they discover my reactions to beatboxing, and then they become a fan of beatboxing, or vice versa, and it happens all the time, and I love it. So I'm hoping to bring in a new crowd, uh, uh, a, a new set of subscribers who are into something else to so, so maybe you guys can uh you know discover something new that you might love but before we do get into this video uh, i would like to have you guys go check out sorry for all the extra noise mybeardlove.com uh great beard balms oils shampoos man just absolutely fabulous stuff love the way it smells love the way it feels love the way it looks uh, so if you've got any facial hair that uh, you want to be more manageable, you want it to look healthier, uh, definitely go uh, check those guys out. I'd also like you guys to go check out my Patreon. I've got, I want to say four different tiers. I, don't know, I, I just redid the whole thing. It might be four. I think it's four. Uh, but definitely go check that out. I've got different levels, so it should be affordable to everybody. So if you'd like to support me that way, definitely go do it. And uh, I've got tons of content that's already on there. You get early release stuff. And uh, with, uh, with a few of the higher tiers, then you also get... Uh, a certain number of requests uh, for reactions per month, depending on which tier you join. Uh, so with all that being said, man, let's get into this. I absolutely love, uh, I love watching uh, Luca. I don't know if that's his actual name, but Lav Luca is the channel. I like watching his reactions to this guy. And I've watched a few uh, Lost in the Pond videos myself. Not this one. This one's fairly new. And the reason I chose this is so he lives in the Midwest, I think, at least he used to. I don't know. I saw a video a while back about, I want to say Indiana. And I lived in Indiana. I'm from Florida. I'm in Florida right now. But I made the horrible mistake of marrying the absolute wrong person a long time ago when I was very young and uh, lived in Indiana. Now, Indiana, I liked. Her, maybe not so much. But Indiana was, it's different. So being from Florida, we're used to just hot, steamy, humid weather all the time. Even in the wintertime when it gets cold, it's only cold in the morning. Usually by 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you're sweating again. So it was nice to have like a change, a, a change in climate where you actually have seasons. We've got summer, 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 a week of kind of winter, kind of fall, and then summer again. That's just how it goes here. So seeing the leaves change was absolutely one of my favorite things about it. Uh, also, snow. I had only seen snow one other time in my life until I moved to Indiana. And then I saw enough for a lifetime. So a little funny story about me and snow. This is how much I don't know. So my, my car, I can't remember what happened to it. The car that I was driving at the moment ran out of gas or, or it broke down in some way next to a cornfield, which sounds like a horror movie starting out. And uh, there are no shortage of cornfields in Indiana. I promise you that. Um, so I had to get out and walk. I think I walked about seven miles, ended up being the count because I went back and, you know, drove that distance once I got everything fixed. Ended up being around seven miles. Um, so the snow was about, I don't know, about ankle deep. And I knew I had a long ways to go, so I wasn't staying on the road the whole time where, you know, it was just a little dusting on the road or I could have walked where somebody drove. But no, I walked through the fields in roughly ankle deep snow, sometimes shallower, sometimes deeper, in steel toed boots. I have never been in as much pain from being cold as I was by the end of that walk. Uh, so I learned a very valuable lesson that day. If you must walk through deeper snow, for the love of God, don't do it in steel toed boots. So 
you got a funny little anecdote and a lesson. So let's get on with it. This is six reasons I actually love living in America's Midwest from a Lost in the Pond. I almost said across the pond again. From Lost in the Pond. Let's go. Let's go. Taking a stance against continuity. That's why I filmed this video either side of a haircut. <laughs> And I, I, I like his, his little comedy that he puts Hi, in there. Hi, my name is Lawrence, and I have lived in the Midwest for 13 years. In that time, I've resided in the cities of Anderson, Fort Wayne, Indianapolis, Indiana, and Chicago. All right, so that's funny. I actually lived in Fort Wayne. I lived in Fort Wayne, and I lived in Columbia City, which is not too far outside of Fort Wayne. But anyway, I just thought that was kind of cool, a little... Uh, it's kind, of, it's kind of cool when, you know, there's a, uh, you know, somebody talks about like a city that you've been to. So you can relate a little bit. And that's, that's why I think I'm going to like this video. Illinois. I've also spent a lot of time in various other states in the Midwest. And I thought now would be a great time to talk about the reasons that I love living here. Here are six of them. I talk about food a lot on this channel, which, you know, says more about me than it does about you. But even though initially mm -hmm. I had a sort of longing for those British foods that I'd left behind when I first moved to the United States, I did over time come to appreciate some of the food items that you can get in the Midwest. I mean, who doesn't like a good Chicago deep dish pizza? And actually, on that Never score, had one of those. I've said this before, I actually prefer the Detroit style. Am I going to get in trouble? But Chicago specializes Probably. in other world famous foods like the Chicago style hot dog. Make sure not to ask for ketchup and do insist on the kryptonite looking green relish. But my experiences aren't all slanted towards Dude, Chicago. Relish is bomb. When I was in St. Louis, I had something called toasted ravioli. It's almost Raviolis. as if the Midwest likes to take well known Italian food and just sort of pack on the calories, but it was really nice. And even though it's been a few years, I remember having and enjoying a pork tenderloin sandwich, which you can't live in Indiana if you haven't had one of those. And recently, one this of my patrons from Ohio recommended that I try eating a Buckeye, which I thought was a person from Ohio, and I didn't fancy ah. getting arrested. But it turns out they're just peanut butter balls dipped in chocolate. So if I'm in the mood, that sounds all right. Even though I'm a man. People. All right. So, listen, the pork tenderloin sandwiches... There's really no way to fuck it up. It's, there's not. There, listen, you get a pork tenderloin, take a mallet, you beat the shit out of it, you egg wash it, you whatever breading you use. Uh, some people would go breadcrumbs. Some people go straight flour. I like a mixture of both. Um, but yeah, man, the pork, loin, pork tenderloin sandwich is absolutely uh, delicious everywhere that I had them. And I'm a huge hot sauce nut. I have hot sauce all the time. And I like I like it as hot as you can go. So I would I would load this thing up with the hottest sauce I could find, and maybe some some steak sauce or some barbecue sauce. Mix that together. Oh man, it's so good. Um, oh, what was the other? The Buckeyes. I'm familiar with those through. Uh, was it my grandmother? I think my grandmother used to make them. And uh, again, those are absolutely awesome, awesome. They will give you a heart attack. <laughs> Uh, or you, you might uh, you might end up diabetic if you don't watch yourself. Tons of sugar. Anyhow, let's go. Massive introvert. I usually do find the good in people after knowing them for three years. That's most certainly become true of people in the Midwest. And when I lived in Indiana, you know, people always talked about who's your hospitality. And it's true. On the whole, people are really welcoming. I mean, it helps if you have a British accent, but they are nice. And I always wondered, well, what's the reason for this? And I think I think it's the weather. I think having to put up with just mountains of snow. German too. There's a lot of Germans up there. Makes people way more patient. That's not true. It makes people less patient. And in Chicago, it's yeah. pretty much yeah. the same. People are usually nice to me, although it did take me a while to figure that out. Just today on the way to the barbers, this big chap in a Cubs hat yelled, what's going on, buddy? And when I first moved here, it would have been difficult to determine if this was a threat or a greeting. And after this sort of thing happened multiple times, I realized that this is just how Chicagoans speak. I think it's affection disguised as a declaration of war. History. All right. So about the whole hospitality thing, I will agree there. All right. So I'm from Florida, but I'm not right now. I live in beach, Florida. I live in St. Petersburg, but I'm from east of here, out in the middle of nowhere. So most people, when they think about Florida, they think Disney, 
or they think the beach. No one ever thinks cattle. But let me tell you what. The whole, once you get off the coastline and away from Disney, it's cows. Some places are more predominantly horses, but cows everywhere. I grew up on uh, almost a 3,000-acre cattle ranch, and so I'm I'm very familiar with the whole the southern hospitality and uh, the agricultural kind of lifestyle. I felt totally at home when I was when I was in Indiana, especially uh, you know away from Fort Wayne, like around Columbia City. There are it's just it's all it's all farmland, and it's it's just like being in Florida, you know where, where I'm from, but just way colder in the wintertime. Um, but yeah, it, and it's the same type of what we call Southern hospitality, they have Hoosier hospitality and Southern, it, it, they're not that much different. It's just, it's, you know, good country folks. And I don't care what you say. There's a lot, a lot of tropes and a lot of, a lot of ignorance around people from the country, but they are really some of the best people you will ever meet. It's a thing. Hospitality is a thing. I open the door for Anybody, if there's somebody walking in the door behind me when I walk into a gas station or somewhere where there's a door that you have to open, I will hold that door open and whoever's behind me, I will let them go and then I will go myself. That's just, that's how I was raised. Had had I not done that as a child, I would have got the shit knocked out of me by my dad. Like it or not, that's how it happened. Um, so yeah, there's just, there's a, a big emphasis uh, with, with, you know, country people about about number one, holding the door for people, being respectful, uh, being respectful to women, and being respectful to elders. And I, I, I say it as a joke because, I mean, it's obviously a joke, but there's a little bit of seriousness behind it because that's how much this was instilled in me. I'll hold the door open for somebody once in a while, and they'll say, oh, thank you. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm just not used to people doing that for me. I was like, listen— if I didn't, my dad will come up out of the grave and get me because he instilled that so hard in me when I was growing up. Anyhow, all right, let's get back into this history. I've said this before. I think before moving to the United States, I didn't have such an appreciation for American history. And you could sort of divide American history into geographic subsets. The eastern portion of America rightly takes a lot of credit because it was settled earlier. The west, just yep. because of expansion. But the Midwest seems to have been that kind of bridge in between. And so a lot of the sort of historical narrative comes out of that fact. You have St. Louis, the gateway to the West. And when I think about that, I think about people like Lewis and Clark. And for my British viewers, that's nothing to do with Superman. And then there's the fact that Abraham Lincoln seems to follow me everywhere. Not literally, he's dead. Even though he was born in Kentucky, <laughs> I was fortunate <laughs> enough years ago to visit his boyhood home in Indiana. That's cool. And just this year, I finally got to visit Springfield, where, of course, he was a legislator. And I can say unreservedly that the Lincoln Museum in Springfield is one of the best museums I've ever visited. And it gave me a newfound appreciation for the 16th U.S president and then i'm fascinated perhaps because of my own story of the people that came here to populate the places in the midwest a lot of people in the midwest are of german ancestry and i fit in really well having yep, absolutely no germanic background but also a decent contingent of scandinavian influence and you know i think maybe that accounts for a lot why of amish can too. handle the snow quite well you know i get messages cost of living all right we're going to stop it here real quick um so a lot of people don't realize you know and people wonder why you know, the East Coast and the West Coast are so heavily, heavily populated and then not so much, you know, in the Midwest. There's a lot more open space out there. People don't realize how wide the Mississippi River is. And it goes from, I want to say, one of the Great Lakes. I could be wrong. I'd have to look at a map. But all the way down the country to the Gulf of Mexico. And if you've ever crossed over the Mississippi... It is huge. So I would imagine that really slowed down the migration. That's why that, like you talked about it being the bridge, you know, that Midwest area being the bridge between the two, it makes total sense because that's kind of where you have to stop until there's a way to get across, until you have a way to get you and your belongings across. You know, they, they had to, you know, set up shop. That's why on either side of the Mississippi, you'll have populated areas and then, you know, on, not, not so much on, on, as you get further away from it. So just a little tidbit I wanted to throw in there. All right, let's go. Cost of living. 
I'm already going to say it's probably going to be where it's, it's a little less expensive. I actually would like to move back up north somewhere. I would love to move back to uh, either, either back to Indiana or Ohio, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. That's not really... I'm getting more east there, but you, you get the drift. I want to leave Florida eventually. I want to get the hell out of this literal hell hole. It's so hot here. I want seasons. I want my kids to be able to play in the snow. If if even just for a, a small portion of their childhood, I would I would love to make that happen. But yeah, uh, the, the cost of living, as from what I've noticed, in the Midwest is a little lower than most other places. Like Florida, forget it. Forget it. Rent here is stupid. It's absolutely ridiculous. And all pretty much all along the coast, you know, New England especially is just really, really, really expensive. Uh, anyhow, so I, I'm thinking he's going to talk about how it's it's a lower cost of living. That's my prediction. Let's go. I'm from people looking to move to the United States and asking me, how much does it cost to live in the U.S.? Mm -hmm. And my answer is always the depends same. Depends on where you go. It really depends on where you're looking to move to. But it seems to me yeah. that the cost of living in the Midwest is significantly more in your favor than that of much of the West and East Coast. For example, I rented three properties yeah. in the state of Indiana and never once did I pay more than $600. This is practically unheard of in Chicago and most certainly unheard of in the big cities on the West Coast and the it's East Coast. It's unheard of here too. Where $600 gets you a shed with no roof. And it's other things, you know, little things like the cost of parking, for example. In the more expensive parts of the United States, it might cost in multiple dollars just to use a parking meter for an hour. In Fort Wayne, I think we paid something like 25 or 50 cents. Now the West and the East Coast do attract British immigrants just because they have major hubs. And I wouldn't want to deny anybody that, but living in the Midwest has certainly been kinder, I think, on my wallet than had I chosen to live in, say, New York City. The same is even true for Chicago. While the cost of living here is definitely more expensive than, say, Indianapolis, your money does go a lot further than if you're living in San Francisco. The trade-off being that you have to put up with 400 billion inches of snow every winter. Ofta. Having grown... Great Lakes. All right. Only, my only experience with the Great Lakes really uh, was when I was when I joined the Navy. Our uh, basic training was literally in Great Lakes, Indiana. It's, it's right there. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think I have seen. Yes, yes. I used to drive a semi, and I got to drive. I don't remember whether I was in America or Canada because I had a load that I went into Canada through Buffalo, New York, and left Canada through Detroit. So I went over over the lakes, and I'm I'm almost certain that I saw from whatever road I was driving on. I'm pretty sure I drove by one of the Great Lakes, and I can't remember which one it was. Um, but yeah, talking about cost of living, as I was talking about, Florida is so expensive. You know, he's talking about up there, you know, paying. You know, he never paid more than $600. That's one thing I miss about living there because rent was so much cheaper. Here, the place that I'm in right now is... Oh, I'm trying to remember the square footage. I can't write off right off the bat. It's, uh, it's around 1,000 square feet, so it's not that big. Three bedroom, one bath, no backyard, um, no place to hook up a washer and dryer, so we have to go to the laundromat. And I'm paying over a thousand dollars here, and it's not in the best of neighborhoods, so you can't even really go to, you know, another neighborhood and expect to pay a whole lot less. Um, so yeah, it's cost of living is, is is crucial when you're trying to pick where you want to go, and one reason why I picked the states that I did is where I want to move to up north, is because those places have significantly lower, at, at least as far as housing goes significantly lower um all right but let's go not not far from the english seaside i've always enjoyed living near to big bodies of water and as somebody who didn't move to america's traditional oh, florida coast, I'm it is it. nice to live just 10 minutes away from lake michigan because it gives the appearance of a huge ocean just without all of that iceberg malarkey and i wonder if a lot of people don't think <laughs> about that that when you're in indiana michigan illinois wisconsin you know you're never too far away from the sound of seagulls even as they're stealing your dipping dots. And of course, that's just Lake Michigan. Four Fries, of the Great chips, Lakes are connected to the Midwest. Sandwich. And the state of Michigan is being a little bit greedy. If the tectonic plates shift wildly enough, it won't think twice about devouring Ontario. I just said all of that out loud. 
for me, one of the yes, most underrated do. things about the Midwest is its sunsets. There's a kind of hue in the sky that I don't think I've seen replicated elsewhere. It possibly helps that the Midwest is so quite true. flat, so your vantage point is always pretty strong. That vantage point, by the way, for me, has often been over cornfields or soy fields, but it hasn't diminished the experience. In fact, it was on that same Route 66 Illinois trip that I had a kind of wow moment. That sounded less cheesy in my head. We were staying in this little village called Sherman, Illinois, and I just wanted some evening B-roll to close out the subsequent video. And I lament to this day that I didn't have a sufficient lens yet to do this sunset justice. And I just wanted to say <laughs> good night to everybody. I feel your pain, my brother. Except the mosquitoes. The only thing that could improve it is to be able to watch the sunset over Lake Michigan. I wonder if he's going to bring sure up the Amish. In Michigan get to do on a frequent basis. I'm not envious at all. And I know what you're <laughs> thinking, Lawrence, wouldn't you get that same effect with a sunrise? I'm never up before 10.30, so no. Anyway, those are just some Lucky. of the things I love about living in the Midwest. Let me know in the comments I guess below that was if you six, live here it? and what you love about it. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US, and don't forget to subscribe. There you go. Follow him right there. Uh, so yeah, I, I just want to add one thing that I thought was kind of cool, and I know it's it's not just Indiana, or, or it, there's a lot in the Midwest and, and a few other places, but there is a substantial Amish presence uh, in that area, and a lot of people want to throw shade, you know, but, and listen, especially the way the world's going, we all might be going to that lifestyle sooner than you think, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not trying to be a doomsayer, I'm just... I'm just watching what's going on, and, you know, shit's crazy everywhere. But I really love how the Amish traditions kind of, they keep that, I'm not, I don't want to say technology is a bad thing. Obviously, I'm, I'm surrounded by it right here. But there is a different appreciation for hard work and nature and working with your hands. Being self-sustaining that I just, I have so much respect for, um, and I just think it's cool. They just even even just the whole going down the street in a in a buggy type of thing with a, a horse drawn carriage. I I I, just, I think it's cool. It's something you don't see a lot of in this day and age, but where there's an Amish presence, you do get to see it. Now, uh, in Florida, I'm, I I don't wouldn't really call it a presence. There are some Amish here. If you really want to get a good handle on on the Amish culture, go drive around the Midwest and go find some. Areas away from from civilization, some some places out in the middle, uh, you know, where you're going to find a lot of cornfields or soybean fields or watermelon fields, whatever they happen to be growing that time of year. And it's really cool. And if if you ever get to talk to them, and you 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 learn an appreciation, you learn to maybe I, I want to say respect is the right word, but I, at least for me, that's what it was. I really respect the fact that that they still live this lifestyle. They don't. They're not on social media. They're not in all the all the bullshit fighting uh, that that is just so prevalent everywhere. That's one reason why it's 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 almost impossible to talk about certain issues because of politics, and I hate that. I I, I miss the days where you could just talk about an issue with somebody and not have your difference of opinion from another person equate to you being evil or a fascist or a communist, depending on which side of the, of the aisle you're on. I just, I, I hate it. And these people don't really, like the Amish, don't really have to worry about it because they're, they're not in social media. They're, they're living. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're being family. And I, I, I really think that's such a, such a cool thing. So, all right. I know I've been long winded here. I know you've probably heard me talk more than you wanted to. But uh, as I said earlier, when I first started the video, uh, go check out Lost in the Pond. Shouts to Lawrence. Shout out to Lav Luca. Uh, go check out both of them. And uh, again, thank you for stopping by. Check out the Patreon. Check out MyBeardLove.com. Check out... No, that's all you got to check out. Uh, subscribe. Thumbs up. Comments. Beard Love. Patreon. I'm out.